Welcome to the brand new series of the Waffle Shop podcast. Brand new home. Brand new home. Brand new person. Brand new person. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not multiple voices you're hearing. It's actually <laughs> it's Luke. Hello. If you've listened to the recap episode from last year, which I'm hoping you have, you may have heard that Luke will be joining me for the journey, I guess. Yeah. Now, going forward. I know. I think the moment before you click record, just send it. It was like, new start. <laughs> Key <laughs> minute. No, no, for you, like it was a new place. You no, know, it's overwhelming. It was a little bit actually, it's just like for a even brief second. Showing people around the studio, like, and because I get to tell the story of how it started, which is obviously quite special for me because mm. I still have that whole feeling of almost like imposter syndrome of like, I can't believe like people are believing me. Mm. <laughs> like, but it's like, I'm believing me now, yeah, which yeah. is what didn't used to happen. And then it, it shows other people like want to be part of you yeah. because you're the one showing them and believing them but it's a bit weird isn't it because i see you showing people around it's like showing people your home it's like yeah. you want to use my home but it's my home so just just know that like it's i do my, my podcast yeah. <laughs> you take your shoes off at the door <laughs> yeah obviously i'm still doing therapy like i'm absolutely <laughs> loving like where this is taking me at the moment but one of the things that really kind of came out of the session last night was around social anxiety now i don't think i'm alone in feeling like every room that i go into i feel like automatically people don't like me or people don't you know like warm to me as that like easy um and i kind of came to the conclusion in therapy that it was kind of because i didn't want to be there in the first place mm. it's not because that i'm not wanted there it's actually a me thing. Yeah. It's because I don't want to be there. So you're trying to talk yourself of yeah. getting out. And I feel like it's kind of, it comes, it's been very apparent, especially the kind of the past six months that I've had, is that I was constantly trying to force myself to sit at tables that I didn't want to sit at. Mm. And it was almost kind of, I got to the bottom of it in therapy and like having more of a conversation about it. But it, it came down to it being a survival technique. Because I was kind of in like family situations or even social situations that I had this real craving of like trying to fit in, trying to be liked. And so I felt like I had to go to these places. I had to be in these circles. Right. I have to be around those kind of like family members. I didn't want to be. Yeah. But it's felt it was like what I needed to do to survive. Yeah. So what what spaces do you want to be in? But that's the thing. I've never had the luxury of asking myself that. Right. So this is why it's so quite... So forced uh, into situations like, I just don't like Yeah, it. but... And that's not saying people have forced me to... I think I've... It's been me who's forced myself into these situations yeah. thinking that, okay, well, that's what I need to do to be liked. Right, okay. Whereas it didn't really suit me in the long run. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm a very kind of open person now when it comes to kind of like my time about, you know, if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to feel guilty for not wanting to do that. Like, so if it is a no, it, it, it's a no. And I'm hoping anyone who's listened to this who's in a situation where, you know, they might be falling into that kind of people pleaser kind of like mentality, like you don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's me. And if they do have an issue with you not doing it, it's their issue. Yeah, that people pleaser is, is a problem, has been a problem of mine, mm. I think, because especially last year, I say yes to most things. But my one of my things this year goals is to default with a no. Yeah, and I think saying yes, I think rea realized last year that it doesn't just detriment me and me running around everywhere. It detriments the family yeah. that are at home because I'm saying yes to things that they're not involved in, and then I'm taking away from time that I'd be with them. I don't know if you've seen this, but Madonna did a show at Madison Square Garden recently. And she turned up two hours late. Yeah. The show was supposed to start at half eight. She turned up at half ten. People in the crowd have now filed a lawsuit against her. They're suing her because of the knock-on effect about them not being able to get home. Like, yeah. they affected their working day, like, the day after. And I kind of, to be fair, I wanted to ask now, like, would you have waited? Probably not. No, cause, well, again, logistics, so that they're always <laughs> this on, is what I mean. on my mind. But <laughs> yeah, if you've got to get a train home or you've got parents looking after the kids, like, and you're meant to be back at like 11 o'clock, which is touch and go. But if yeah. you're going to be back at one, it's Madonna's fault. Exactly. <laughs> so Sorry, Madonna was late. I was like, 
But it, it was interesting because I was like, oh, yeah. That's a good point. I was like, if I was in the moment, I probably would have waited. But then I was like, I would have been knackered the day after. Like anything past like half 10 now, I'm like. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Also, your energy would have been sapped by the time that she came on stage. Exactly. Like, and when time. it comes to like going to gigs anyway, it's like, well, when do I go? You have to like strategically go to the toilet, strategically go to the bar. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to do all these things strategically because you don't want to miss the, like, the start. You don't want to miss your favorite song. Yeah. I guess it would depend if they were keeping the crowd updated. She's going to be two hours late. Yeah. People wouldn't know what to do. But like, if you don't know, you're kind of like, I don't want to leave. I paid yeah. this ticket. So it depends on that as well. I want to tell you about something that I did recently that I think, I think you've done it before, but it was what I think you're a fan of. Um, I went back to um, one of those flotation tanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And obviously the first time I went, there was a power cut. So I actually got stuck in it. Oh my God. <laughs> float therapy for, for the yeah, audience. Float, float therapy. therapy. So, uh, sorry, um, go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> the first time. The first time I went, it was to fair. The place is an empty time. It's incredible. Um, it's called Spa Float. Check it out. Um, I had an incredible massage. I had a infrared sauna. Then I had a the float tank. Oh, you went for the, and everything. Yeah. Like I'm not pissing around. Thick with this. and yeah. mix. <laughs> um, and it was incredible, incredible experience. But then someone had to knock on the door and was like, um, there's been a power cut. But obviously you get earplugs, so I couldn't hear a thing. So I was like, I don't know if I can hear something. Like, something's tapping. Um, but it wasn't. It was the guy to tell me there's a power cut. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I had to kind of like get out. Um, it was almost like being born again because it was like <laughs> pitch black. Not that I remember being born the first time. <laughs> um, but like I had to like crawl out, obviously, because it yeah. only opened a certain way. Obviously, you go in, you kind of like you naked, and it was just a weird experience. But I yeah, loved it. I think as well because I, I don't think it's a common practice in the UK. I think it's more popular in the US. Oh. So for a lot of people, they probably won't know what uh, float therapy is. Yeah. And just to explain, because I, I love, I want to hear more about this story. It's like a big like egg shape that's open. Yeah. And you're not completely naked. I was swimming shorts unless you went completely naked. Oh no, I went. Did you go completely nuts? Yeah. Oh, fair play. <laughs> we, we, they tell you to. Uh, Do they? I, Actually, know. I don't know if I just. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, you go in naked. No, I didn't. But I imagine that'd be quite a nice sensation because it's salt water, isn't it? And it's not. So it's really weird. So it's again, like, that, like, it's like that mint. Um, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the tea shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. <laughs> but the uh, so it's a big egg, and then you get in it, and it's not got much water in it, and it's filling up, and you're like, well, so it's called float therapy. So yeah. You're like, how am I going to float in that? So it's loads of salt water. You get in it, and everything goes black. There's lights on at first, a little bit of music, yeah. so it, like it dims you down, and then you close it. Did you fully close it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same. Full like sensory deprivation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you do float, don't you? You yeah. like you have that little like airport a airplane, the halo neck cushion. Yeah, yeah, which I do use, and you lie there for an hour with no senses at all. The way I describe it is, it's like meditation, sleep, and a spa mixed into. I wouldn't fall asleep one. in it. Although they did say, did it, you fall asleep in that? No, no, no. My, what it did do to me though, like my mind was is too chaotic, yeah, and it made it very, very apparent that how just of well, just how chaotic that's the whole point of it, is. though, isn't it? Um, and the first time, like I really threw myself into it, like I, I really what, kind dived? of dived. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could. No, no. Too shallow. no, don't do that. Actually, um, like I and I really kind of like got something out of it. Mm. Um, like I really enjoyed it. The second time I went which was quite recent, I started to see lights. Do you know the reasons for this? Well, I didn't um, until I, because I was a bit cautious about saying like, oh, I was in this flotation tank. I was seeing like these blue and kind of like purple lights. Um, and I didn't want to say anything because I thought they're going to think I'm an absolute weirdo and cart me out of the shop. Um, but I mentioned it and she was saying like, yeah, it's like your aura. I was like, oh, you Peter. Know <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I kind of like went through and obviously the blue aura is like your throat aura and it was like like good communicator and like emotional like creative all these kind of things like I was doing like a bit of a deep dive into it I was like did you I, know what purple was no I think that's healing oh me that Not it's enough. really interesting and this is what, like, I feel like I'm on the right path again now because I started to explore different kind of 
ways of kind of looking after myself, like my body, my mental health, which obviously led to like the podcast and like mm. various other experiences. It's like broadening now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I genuinely was like, oh, wow. Okay, this is this is the thing mm. now. And it was, it genuinely blew my mind. And then I was doing like more of a deep dive and it was kind of really opening up, I guess, to that kind of new world of... It is a little bit spiritual. Spiritual yeah, awakening. Like spirituality it, kind of side of things. Yeah. I wouldn't call myself spiritual, but I do like... Name's Luke. Why would you call yourself spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it was> silly. <laughs> oh, but I do love the whole wellness aspect and I share stuff on Instagram. That's not my own post, but the, the stuff I like to share. And there was one the other day that was like a battery full a battery half and a battery empty and it said you need rest here and it pointed at the middle one yeah because when you get to the bottom of the re- like low battery it's too late you you burnt out yeah um but that was the day before i had my little wellness day yesterday where i would look i would have liked to have done something like you did but i had like some other work bits to do so i think why i didn't do that is because it completely cut myself off from everything did you, did you do it on a sunday yeah what a great day to do it it resets you up for the week. Yeah, that's a great day to do it, and you, you don't have work on your mind. Yeah, as a like a default. But yeah, yesterday I went to a health club, got there at seven. I worked out, had a swim, sauna, steam room, back to the steam room, and then I was ready at nine o'clock. So I came back out into like the cafe part, and then I had kind of like five or six things that I wanted to do that were like for me in the business, not for clients, not editing, not this, not that. And um, I did them by like half 11. So I didn't actually need that much time. So I thought I needed to be there all day. Um, and then I got to like half 11. I was like, these are the ideas that we've been yeah. talking about. And um, I just had my headphones in. I had a playlist. I think it was called Butter, which gives you the type of oh, okay. vibe Smooth. I was on. Smooth. I feel a little bit more recharged. My thoughts aren't so far behind what I've got to do day to day. They're, like, they're up to speed. Mm. And I wouldn't have done that last year. Or the year before. I think we need more of it this year. 100%. Yeah, more self-care. 100%. More self- 100% yeah. more self-care. Look at us. Two lads doing self-care. Self-care. I wanted to tell you about another situation that I had. And I don't really talk about the whole kind of like love life situation on the show. But I feel like, you know, this is this is a new direction of the Waffle Shop. Funnily enough, I was going to ask you if you told your partner that you loved them today. I was going to ask you that. No, don't do those kind of things. You don't do them? No. Or are you telling me not to? <laughs> I feel, do you know what's weird? I feel comfortable talking about it on the podcast, but face to face, vile. Yeah, um, I guess for you, you've now created your safe space for the podca- podcast and it's got context. Yeah. Out there, it might be like, no. Why are you talking to me about yeah, exactly. that? Exactly. Just we, like and no subscribe. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to know how I feel? That. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just sit there, like, leave them on a cliffhanger. It's like, this isn't how life works. Here. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> like your life isn't a podcast no so so where are you good at one, with it well no it's good like don't get me wrong like i'm having a good time it's great like yeah. kind of thing um but i had a situation so on my self-care day so i had my spa flow and obviously when you come out of those kind of things like the flotation tanks you can be feeling like a little bit mm. woo, you know yeah, you're yeah, yeah. you're kind of floating. in a good place you're floating yeah, yeah like bouncing around leamington i was feeling great and i thought you know what i'm gonna go and buy myself a new book and I feel like, and I don't know if this is the thing, but there was a bit of, <laughs> it's not even Here funny. It's not, there was a moment in the bookshop where I was just browsing the books and there was a little bit of a, oh, you're in the bookshop too. And I was like, yeah, I didn't know the person. There was just a bit of a, a vibe with someone else who was looking for books. And, and they, they said, oh, you're in a bookshop too? <laughs> no, they didn't. Oh, no, I, that was my brain. Oh, right. <laughs> thinking out loud. <laughs> Obviously, we're both sitting there in water zones. So. And it, I thought it was quite a weird thing to happen. And then I got like a little bit of a, not butterflies as in like, oh, wow. Like this is, I've just met the love of my life in a bookshop. I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> yeah, no. But I mean, they don't listen to the podcast anyway. Um, yeah, it That's was a bit you... of a, it was a bit of a moment like, oh, look at you being all, <laughs> Bucky, Bucky, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, maybe they're thinking the same about me." And it was just like a bit of an awkward, like you had interaction. A spirit moment. Yeah, 
I you was were, like, oh. You, you were all up in your spirits. Like, yeah. Out of spa flow. I don't know if it was the Epsom salt or, the, <laughs> <laughs> or the there was a vibe there. Or the fact that you were in there naked. Yeah, but it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, still wearing the halo. <laughs> um, have I had moments like that? But um, there, there was something. Like, but to me, now I'm saying it out loud, it probably was the, the salt. Yeah. <laughs> the spirits. But, but there was a vibe there. Yeah. I don't know. I, just, I wanted to say because I don't know if I'm actually going mad or also, I was making it up. Or How often do you go into bookshops? No, yeah, not often. Yeah, so you probably just felt like. Well, it's normally an Amazon job. Yeah. And I was there. I had like my Starbucks. I was like looking at like the books, like, oh, well, what's going to be like, you know, what do I want to learn about kind of thing? And it was very much like. You felt new. Yeah, I felt like I was in like a Twilight film, yeah. actually. Now I'm kind of saying it out loud. <laughs> Speaking of books, obviously mm -hmm. we're a big fan. We're kind of getting into that kind of like whole, you know, self-development kind of like yeah. stage now of like our lives. Um, but one of the questions that my journal actually prompted me to answer the other day, and I skipped it because I didn't know what it was. Um, but it was like, if there was a book written about your life, what would the last line be? Whore. Whore. No, that's a whore oh. question. Oh, so you're calling me a whore? <laughs> I mean, that could quite Hwa. be it. What the last line of your book be? So is this last line of your book, like, to date, or last book, last line of your life type thing? Maybe of your life. Oh, I guess you don't know that, because that's, that's literally what the line, the yeah. word says, so. Well, I guess it'd have to be so far. Yeah, because, yeah, you don't know. Do you, do you know what yours is? I know, because you turn the page, but have you thought about it? Yeah, and it's been kind of going over and over in my head. That would always be evolving, though, if yeah. it's like the, like, at that but I guess that's what journal entries are. It's like your entry at that at point. At that point. It's the last line of the book. Go on, you show yours. I think I think if I was to answer that question now, like currently where I'm at, like mentally, um, even just like in my life in general, I think my last line of the book would be, I'm so grateful you didn't give up. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think that's, what, at this moment in time, that's what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And with it being a book as well, you're trying to think of something like that's yeah. actually good literature. I think mine would be keep trusting the building blocks that you're placing type of thing. I'm no, I don't know if we're doing this right. Because are we dead at this point? No. Well, we're not, not based dead. on what not we now. just said. Well, yeah. Obviously we're not dead. <laughs> no, because it, it's the last line of your book. No, because what's it? It depends what the book is. Yeah, because Stephen Barlow isn't dead and he's got loads of books. Yeah. Well, I get, okay, so it's two different answers then, isn't it, really? Yeah, okay, so if it was, if this was an autobiography, like it's in front of you, you're no longer here, what would you want the last line of your autobiography to be? Okay, Luke <laughs> has left a legacy of not just a company, but a feeling. Yeah. Okay. As in, hopefully everyone who knew me or interacted with me yeah. would know what that was like. That's powerful. Warm. Yeah. Kind. I think I'd put my last sign of my autobiography would be, <laughs> I told you I was poorly. <laughs> Drop some comedy yeah. on them. Would it really be that? I think it'd have to be something funny. I think... Yeah, you know, there's there's two sides of me. There's a side of me that I don't really kind of like showcase as much on this podcast because I kind of focus on those kind of like those meaningful conversations. But I think if it was an autobiography, I think it would be like, I mean, I'm grateful that I didn't give up on myself yeah. and that I'm giving myself a chance now. But I think it would have to be like a comedic kind of yeah, like yeah. sign off. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like the idea of leaving it with like a, a funny. Or I'd leave coordinates. <laughs> I would, that's what I'd do. I would leave coordinates. To so what, a portaloo? Why a portaloo? Like, what would you leave it to? The, your pot of gold that you put in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just didn't love our food. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for... Sing it, sack it. Is it here or are they talking shit? This is one of my favourite parts of the show. Obviously, this... I invented it, <laughs> so I'm going to love it. Um... <laughs> But obviously, this is the part of the show where I dissect lyrics, get your opinion, see what you think. This one at the moment, I actually heard this in the shower. It was one of those songs that, I was about to say if no one was looking, but obviously no one should be looking if you're in the shower. I don't but listen to songs in the shower. Don't you? I get scared of the moisture going in the phone. <laughs> well, that was... 
Sorry, I... <laughs> there's no video. Oh, no, there is a video now. <laughs> Please don't, don't do that. this on this show. <laughs> um, but the song this week that I kind of wanted to get your opinion on the lyrics was a um, big song, um, Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Okay. I'm not going to sing it, but and but the lyrics go, and I don't want the world to see me because I don't think they'd understand when everything's meant to be broken. I just want you to know who I am. Yeah, great. I mean, off the hat, I'm going to sing it straight away. Um, but I wanted to get your opinion on this because do you think that there's been moments of your life that you kind of, you didn't want the world to see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's maybe a temporary, like, person dealing with, like, a, a particular moment. Yeah. That's not what I should... That's not a want to, not what I want to be remembered for, um, nor should I be because that's just a period of time. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where the spotlight is in your life, and I can think of a few moments that I'll be like, "That's not who I am." Yeah. So please don't judge me on that particular moment. Yeah. See, I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm the kind of the opposite of that with this. This is what lyric, it's good. yeah, on. because I think f the first kind of almost 30 years of my life i didn't want the world to see me like the real me yeah I guess. oh okay so it's that's flipped. yeah <clears throat> um because to one i didn't know who the how i was yeah but two it goes back to that whole kind of like survival thing i was saying at the start of the show i was in a situation of like you know caring for people and kind of going above and beyond um that i so it's a situation help. that i didn't want to be in but I did that to try and survive, to try and fit in. Um, and I think it was a case of like, I didn't want the world to see me because of who they are. They wouldn't understand me or my feelings or my needs. The one thing I don't agree with is when everything's meant to be broken. Um, because I don't think everything is meant to be broken. No. You know, like things like trust, like hearts and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's incredible growth tactics, you know, when you know, you are, when you do get your heart broken or trust is broken. No, but if it does, when everything's meant to be broken, I want you to understand who I am. So you're still oh, the same person. That's got a goosebump when you said yeah. that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, these are great lyrics because, and it's all about perception because we've yeah. just list, listed off two very different views of mm. what that could do. But yeah, if your heart broken or your trust is broken, still know who I am. Yeah. Or if my heart's broken, still know that I'm the same person. Or if I broke your heart, yeah, I'm still the same. Or oh, even if you would go, as, I'd probably with this, I'd go as far as saying like when everything's meant to be broken. There was multiple times last year when I was like at rock bottom, like broken. Can't fix and yourself if you're not yeah, broken. I just want you to know who I am, and it's that kind of like I'm still Taylor. I'm still yeah, that yeah. person. That must really resonate with you. Yeah, like I didn't actually realize. Like I, I wish you could kind of see how I like my. The arms, no, the arms on my hair are standing up. You're, you're filling up a bit. <laughs> yeah, Not in your eyes, I but didn't. Like it's going up your. I wrote this off the cuff, <clears throat> this one, because I heard it this morning. I thought that like, it's been going around. But until I've read it out and spoke to you about it, I didn't realize just how much it resonated mm. with me. But, oh, God, this is going to be one of those ones I'm going to have to add to the, the cry list. Your song? Yeah. And I, t I messaged you, didn't I? I proper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I nearly did in the podcast and we did it before. So it's the same song, The Chance of Rap. No, it wasn't. It um, was no, no. Yeah. Kahan. Yeah. I think I said that right. Yeah. Um, stick Season. Stick Season it is. So I don't know the song very well. It's cropped up on a couple of playlists mm. that I listened to. And I love it. I turned it up. But then Kasha spoke about something with Ava and like a moment and it oh, just walloped me. It, but like, because I like the song, it's very like atmospheric and powerful she said it and i was just like what the hell and then it was about ava and like the moment that i came home after their after her birth but i came home by myself because they were still there and i remember how i felt when i got home and then that song was back and it was just like i proper sobbed <laughs> proper sobbed so now when, like you say when i listen to that song now it'll be a different feeling yeah. i feel but also play it loud still like no, hit rightly me. so. Yeah, hit me. Hit no, play, give it all you got. It's like a greatest hits, though, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like those kind of moments are building like a greatest hit, hits album for us. That when it gets to like the time, you know, when we are writing our autobiographies, when we haven't got long left, those songs are going to take us right back to those. Yeah, 
years, those emotions, those feelings. It's a roadmap, um, isn't good, it? Bad. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. God, what an episode. Thank you for joining me for a waffle. Loved, um, it, loved it, loved it, loved it. If you like what you've heard, share it. Wait, well, hang Subscribe. on. What am, I, what am I trying to say? If you have enjoyed the podcast, this is all new to me. I've never done this before. Subscribe to it. You know, let me know what you think. Get in touch. Give me a review. Yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Get in touch. We'd love to hear like what's pissed you off this week and or even what songs have soundtracked your week. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let me know. And I will see you next week. You just headbutt the microphone. Yeah, that really hurt. Mm, that's a bit odd thing to do. <laughs>